<clears throat> All right, so what's up everybody? Grim Green back here today. Thank you so much for joining me again. I got this Lost Vape Quest Q Ultra a few weeks ago and I've been using the 0.3 ohm mesh coil heads in it and having a delightful, delightful vape. Mesh coil heads in this just vape really nice. The airflow is nice and open. Then I got to the RBA base. I was so pumped and I wanted to build this RBA base and I built it and it was terrible. I, I, it was 100% my fault. Messed it up completely. Messed up the wicking completely. Built it two more times messing up the wicking completely, completely. So I went back to a mesh coil head and I thought, well, maybe RBA bases aren't for me. Maybe I'm just bad at building them and maybe I'm just bad at wicking them. So after admitting defeat and going back to a coil head, today is the day that I make my stand against this RBA base. I'm going to get it vaping well. I'm going to wick it correctly. So it's time to do what we always do. Quick, short, up, closey time and go. <clears throat> All right, yeehaw. Well, this is the Lost Vape Q Ultra from Lost Vape Quest. Lost Vape Quest is sort of the sub-brand of Lost Vape. Lost Vape does the higher end DNA stuff and Lost Vape Quest sort of does the more lower end non-DNA stuff. This is the Q Ultra. It's an aluminum body, so it's very, very lightweight. You can see right there, USB-C on the bottom. There's your screen, goes up to 40 watts, basically shows you everything you need to know. The battery level indicator isn't terribly, terribly functional. It's not a very accurate graphical representation of what's left on your battery. It's just kind of hard to read because it's so small, but it's whatever. And it adjusts in 0.5 watt increments. Thank the maker. You got a real nice sort of uh, clicky fire button right there. Pods release in very much the same way as just a little button right here. Boop, press it down, just jettisons out. But it goes in very easy. You just put the front in, click. And there is a little AFC up here, but I'm gonna use some heavy air quotes here. AFC, because it feels like it actually adjusts nothing at all. It kind of just spins and there's one place where you can get it where it feels maybe slightly more restricted, but for the most part, it's just, it's, it's just kind of there and open, doesn't really adjust anything. Then you got this fantastic system right here for filling your pods. So we need to get to the RBA base on the inside because like I said, I wicked it completely, completely wrong. And I wanna show you not only the wrong way that I did it, but hopefully the right way afterwards. Just wanna show you guys, these are the 0.3 ohm mesh coil heads and you can see they're pretty big and open on the inside with that mesh. It almost looks like a coil head for a sub ohm tank. So I'm gonna go rinse this pod out. These just pull out very easily just kind of right out of the bottom brilliant all right got the rba base out of there and this is just the little rba base that comes with it this top part of the ch chimney just kind of threads off and then when i get this off you can see how badly i did it just ended up kind of choking those little wick holes off on the side there's little notches for your wicks to go in i kind of stuffed them way too far down in there choked it off started going really really constantly dry on me i'm going to try to use a little bit less cotton and i'm actually going to try to just set the cotton above these little uh, notches right there. The coil I have installed in here now is just one of the included coils that came with it. I believe it's spaced canthal, not 100% sure. One thing they do include in this RBA base that I think is pretty great is just this little adapter. If you were to put like contact coils or if you wanted to try to cram an alien or something in there, it's just a little adapter that lets you put it on a 510 mod so that you can glow, strum, build, whatever you want to do. But it'll also work as like a uh, building platform, you know, so we can wick this easier. Shout out to Bearded Viking customs for the uh, Stormtrooper build stand. I'm also going to be using cotton bacon this time because last time I used the included fiber, whatever cotton they included in this RBA base, and it felt like not cotton. It felt like something artificial like rayon or something in there. So I'm just going to use cotton bacon this time because it's just something I'm used to. So like I said, I'm going to wick it. I'm going to try to get the cotton just to hover sort of above these little notch cutouts for the liquid flow. I think that's how we're gonna be playing this game. I'm gonna do my best to sort of wet these coils down, kind of get them maybe folded over just a little bit on themselves, but again, just to hover above this tiny little notch. That's the goal. Okay, so you can kind of, you guys can kind of see what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to keep the airflow open right here, and I'm just trying to tuck these wicks down and just kind of stuff them so that they sit right above 
that notch. There's not really an exact science to it. It's just get it where it kind of needs to be and hopefully it'll stay there. I feel like I got these kind of where they need to be, just above those notches. So let's try to get this chimney on. Oh, dang, that was easy. I do actually have a pretty good feeling about this. We got our pod, so this is just gonna go in exactly like a coil head. Then we go boop, then we go bleh. And just like that, we're back in business with a newly built RBA base. And one last thing while I have you here before we go back up top is I just wanna show you this. This is probably my least favorite portion of this device. It's literally just an aesthetic, like, speaker grate looking thing. Really serves no purpose. It would have been nice if this was just black or just aluminum. I don't care for the way this looks. And additionally, this is like a minor nitpick, I guess, but where this speaker grate meets the pod, there's a lip. There's just a little lip right here and I can feel it every time I grab this thing. This little lip, in combination with the aluminum body, eh, makes it feel uh, a little bit cheap. All right, well, let's get back out to normal view. Let's vape this. Freaking flawless. I'm so glad, I'm so glad I didn't give up on this RBA base. That's the way you wick it. That's, that's the jam. I don't know what I was thinking. Don't try to jam your wicks down into those little notches right there. That's not what they're for. I tried the troll doll technique one time on this and I did the same exact thing. I just clogged those holes with cotton. The trick is you get your cotton, you kind of fold it under itself just a little bit, just like you saw, have it kind of just Above those notches, it, it'll wick, it'll wick, and it'll wick. The included coil is a 0.51, and I still only have it set to 25 watts, and it's awesome. Oh, I'm so glad that this works now. And the first thing I noticed right out of the gate was the RBA base has way better flavor. I've been using PB Party exclusively in this AIO kit on the mesh coil heads, and now in the rebuildable base, and it just tastes better in the rebuildable base. Very nice. Honestly, overall, I really enjoy this device. I don't love the way that it looks. I don't love the speaker grate. I don't love that it's made out of aluminum. It feels very lightweight, but to me that kind of translates into just feeling a little bit cheap. I wish it had a little bit better fit and finish as well. That little lip right there, I constantly feel it. There's some light rattling in the buttons. It truly and honestly kind of feels like a lower end version of those original Orions. Holy crap, this is vaping good. This is just, it's the experience, the vape experience from it is just so great. Unfortunately, brass tacks, vape budget hands. Are you gonna need your vape budget hands for something like this? Even though it's supposed to be a lower end version of like the Lost Vape DNA stuff, still carries a little bit of a price tag on it. The Lost Vape DNA stuff is like 60 to $70. The Lost Vape Quest stuff is like 40 to $50. This particular version falling into the $50 range. So yeah, you know, there's some vape budget hands included. Now, if we're gonna play the Aliens game or the FDA game where they have come and taken everything I have, I have nothing left to vape, is the Lost Vape Quest Q Ultra 40 watt AIO, something I'm gonna seek out and buy right away. Here's the thing. Now that I know that I can master this RBA base and I'm not gonna have to continuously buy coil heads, it's gone up a bit. That has become a maybe I would buy this. I like the coil heads, I like the RBA base. And ultimately what this provides for me that you can't really even put a price tag on. It's just a really high quality, flavorful, warm vape. It does have some downsides. It's got some fit and finish issues. The airflow doesn't really adjust anything. There is a slight, slight little lag on the button when you press it and then it fires. It does that thing. Overall, I feel like this is a solid entry from Lost Vape Quest. There's a lot of AIO kind of devices out there on the market. Things like the Smoke Nord, things like the Vupu Vinci. Yeah, and this kind of vapes, honestly, a lot like those vapes. Ultimately, the decision is going to be yours to make, but that's what I got for today, everybody. YouTube doesn't allow links in the description anymore, so you're gonna have to use that Google Foo. But thank you guys, seriously, so much for watching. It's just a matter of time. You just gotta master that RBA base. Just trial and error. And I had failure after failure after failure after failure before I finally did it correctly this way and now it's and now it's perfect so, so don't give up don't give up on those rba bases anyway thank you guys so much for watching and remember no matter what anybody tells you absolutely let's keep on vaping <laughs>